Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 15 How to Receive the Holy Spirit by Don Crow. We are going to talk today about how to receive the Holy Spirit. Acts 10 verse 1 says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment. This was a military rank, probably a captain over a regiment. Verse 2 continues, A devout man, and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people, and prayed to God always. He was righteous, did things that were right, feared God, gave much money to people in need, and the Bible says he prayed to God always. But we are going to find out, and it will be amazing, that even though he did things right, even though he feared God and had a prayer life, he did not have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It says in verses 3 to 6, about the ninth hour of the day, about three o'clock in the afternoon, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. This man, although he was God-fearing, righteous as far as doing things that were right, and had a prayer life before God, was sent an angel who told him to send for Simon Peter, who would tell him what he must do. We see in Acts 10 verse 43 exactly what Peter was instructed to tell him. To him all the prophets witness that, through his name, through the name of the Lord Jesus, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Isn't this amazing? This man who had all these things to his credit did not have a personal relationship with God through the person of Jesus Christ. God said, the things you are doing are great, they're wonderful, and they are a memorial before me, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I've sent an angel down to tell you to send for a man named Peter, and he will tell you what you must do. In Acts 10.43, when Peter went to Cornelius' house, he said, To him all the prophets witness that, through his name, the Lord Jesus Christ, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Now look what happened here. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Acts 10 verse 44. Cornelius was receiving as he heard of faith in Christ, and he put his faith in Christ for the remission of his sins. As soon as he did, the Holy Spirit fell upon him and all those that were in that house. It says in verse 45, And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. How did they know that? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Verse 46. Every time the Holy Spirit falls on an individual in the New Testament, a gift of the Holy Spirit manifests and gives evidence that they have received the infilling of the Spirit. In the New Testament, they usually spoke in tongues or prophesied. 
I got down on my knees one evening in a field in Dallas, Texas, and said, God, I don't know about all this speaking in tongues and the baptism in the Holy Spirit that people are talking about, but if there is a way I can praise you, a way I can magnify you, a way I can go beyond my human English language, I want it. I started worshipping God, and as I did, the Holy Spirit gave me a language, an utterance that I had not known or learned. The Bible says in Acts 2 verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Who did the speaking? They did. Who gave the utterance? The Holy Spirit. Luke 11 verse 13 says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? All you have to do right now is ask. Believe that you receive. Yield yourself to God. Begin to worship the Lord and he will give you an utterance to worship and praise him in a language you have never learned. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read together John 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We read Acts 3 verse 19. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. We read Mark 16 verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. We read Colossians 2 verse 13. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. We read Romans 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And we read Matthew 25 verse 46. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life, Question. From these scriptures, describe some of the terms that the Bible uses for salvation. Answers. Being born again. John 3 verse 3. Conversion. Acts 3 verse 19. Believing and being baptized. Mark 16, verse 16, having been forgiven, Colossians 2, verse 13, having received the Spirit of Christ, Romans 8, verse 9, eternal life, Matthew 25, verse 46. We read Acts 11, verse 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Question. 
how does this verse describe the experience of the baptism with the Holy Spirit? Answer, as the Holy Spirit falling on someone. We read John 20 verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. We read Acts 2 verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Question. Jesus' disciples received the Holy Spirit, John 20, verse 22, but a few days later were actually baptized with the Holy Spirit, Acts 2, verses 1 to 4. Look at and compare these facts. Answer. In John 20, verse 22, the disciples received the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2, verses 1 to 4, the very same disciples were then filled with the Holy Spirit, which is an inward and outward immersion. See Acts 1, verse 8. We read Acts 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Question. What is the purpose of the baptism with the Holy Spirit? Answer. To empower for service or witness. We read Acts 2 verses 38 to 39 and 1 Corinthians 1 verse 7. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 7 So that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Question. Is the baptism with the Holy Spirit for us today? Answer. Yes. The gifts of the Holy Spirit will cease at the second coming of Christ, but not until then. We read Luke 11 verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Question. If you have not received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, what should you now do? Answer. Ask for it. We read Acts 2 verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Question. Will you ask, receive, speak and worship God in the prayer language that God gives you? Answer. Yes, I will speak, but the Holy Spirit will give me the utterance, the language. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway, taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.